Hi there. Welcome to part 5 of The Adventures of the Flying Centaur Hunter. My name is Aiken and we were on our last episode wrapping up our first room with some shaky hands and some terrible Homer Simpson moment on the shock serpent. And I've looked up some options, looked up some items before I started this recording. And I've noticed that uh, I'm lacking some other kind of damage in my evocation items because here I have two lightning items and the shock serpent down there. If I have had a wand of acid there, that would have been very good and probably would have saved the scroll of blinking and another potion of heal wounds. So I've decided to uh, replace this wand of lightning with the wand of acid because I don't need both of them when I have a lightning rod on me. That's really not necessary. So we're going to pick this one up and drop this lightning wand. And while we're at it, we're noticing that we have no recharging scrolls. That's interesting. Hmm. And there's no further copies of these items. That's really sad. Okay, so since we're done with the snake pit, we can also swap our uh, swap out our ring of poison resistance with the new one we found down in the snake pit, which provides now some fire resistance for us, which is actually really good. And the resistance from negative energy comes in handy as well. And we also get the ability to go in this, but not at a good failure rating right now. Although I can prepare it at this failure rating pretty well. And on the last episode I was thinking about going for Shoals next, but I reconsidered my options here and it's either Depths 1, Elven 1, or Waltz 1, and then Shoals 1. And since I've been experiencing some very hard situations now and then with this character, I've decided to go little by little with this character. So I'm going to start out with the Elven Halls 1, because... I have a seen visible ring on me, okay. Uh, because the elves all have a low hit dice pool, so they're gonna die pretty quickly. If I'm noticing that I'm having trouble hitting them, I'm definitely gonna swap over to another area. Oh, that's that's a nasty situation. So. It's really troubling me that I only have that few charges of my wand of digging, but I'm definitely gonna consider using it here. Because the problem with this with this scenario, I had the same one on my uh garden in the last run. Alright. They could have used their uh summonings through these grates. And that would have been pretty annoying if they stayed behind those bars. So this situation is going pretty well. And I feel like as long as it's only those mages, we're pretty fine. So we found the new ring. Let's check it out. Positive energy. That's nice. Not too useful, but nice. I'm going to drop this for now, because if I feel like I need this ring as an option, I can come back and grab it. But I don't feel like there are so many uh, situations where I need uh, more than one pip of resist negative as soon as possible. That doesn't happen too often, and our inventory slots here are really limited, because I'm carrying around too many different evocation items. But I want to keep them because I think they bring me some options 
in certain situations. And there goes Agnes. Uh, she is armed with a leisure tank of electrocution featuring a very high evasion rating. And this could be potentially pretty scary because I think she's faster than me. All right. So I thought I'm going to use this scroll of summoning here and maybe swap over to the X and put up my Okavaru skill and see what will happen while we're hacking at her. Went pretty well. I've expected something like that. And by now I feel like this battle axe should be my secondary weapon because I will soon be able to turn off uh, axes completely. Because heroism gives a plus 5 bonus to my martial arts and weaponry, defense skills and ranged weapon skills. So if I, re I need this axe not often. And if I'm going to use it, I usually put up my uh, Okabaru stuff, and that's why I think it's totally okay to have this at 15. So these Deep Elf Archers are one certain type of enemy I carry around this axe for, because they are always repelling missiles and are pretty hard to take down if you're only relying on your arrows. And I like to have options for these to smack them down properly. Okay, so goes pretty well so far. And there is a big. I think that's a shapeshifter. So I'm not gonna fire on the shapeshifter here. Oh no, it's Kirky. So let's have a look at the situation. She has a 19% chance to polymorph us into a pig. That's pretty much actually, and too much to take as long as these pigs are around. So I'm gonna take them down first. And let's see if Kirky will follow up. Nope. So let's have a look at Kirky. She can see invisible. I've expected something like that. Well, it's okay with her as long as this is a controlled situation because she can turn you into a pig and then you can't kill her anymore. But as a pig, you're even if you're not a centaur, you're suddenly faster than he, than he uh, than she is. And whoa. Let's see. Got tormented. But this went well, <laughs> okay. Uh this uh, demon had torment in his repertoire and that means he can cut my HP into health into uh, health as many times as he wants to. And if they keep chaining this skill, stuff can get really ugly really quickly. So always take these demons with really high priority on your kill list or in this scenario if they're only summoned. Uh, hard focus on the summoner is really important. Okay, that's something I don't want to take head on. It's way too many archers with them, and they can deal a decent amount of damage if it's such such a mess of them. So we're going to switch over to the axe and get into heroism and show them who's boss. I think I should be fine going to melee for this fight, just for one time. This should be okay. So there we go. Alright. 
So there goes a trident of piercing. We're gonna switch over to the bow because that's the faster weapon if I'm not uh, into heroism. But I think as soon as... Hmm, nah, I think I'm gonna... I'm really tempted to see the axe as an option as soon as there are uh, two or more enemies in front of me. Because, well, axe and longbow have identical um, damage and min delay ratings, which means in terms of hitting, it's actually right now better wielding my axe because it's plus four, not plus two. But yeah, the maths behind this would be that as soon as two enemies are in front of me, the cleave is more valuable than the single target damage of my bow. And since both weapons have identical speed ratings and damage ratings, I think I should do that more often. And long story short, I don't want to rely purely on heroism to buff up my uh, access to 20, so I'm going to keep leveling it until it hits 20. So these flying weapons are a bit of a pain to kill. So there goes an archer. We can try to shoot him for one time, but this really takes some takes some few shots and you no know, I don't like it. Gonna melee the next time, but for now we're gonna take down the other guys. And now we're gonna swap, uh, swap over to the axe and chop this guy down. There goes another mage, so we're gonna switch over to the bow again. There we go. Oops. But I don't think I can fall down shafts as long as I'm flying. Alright. So let's check if any better bows showed up here. Arbalists. But I don't want to start training another ranged weapon for now. So there goes a longbow velocity. Let's have a look at that. Maybe it has a good enchantment. Oh well. It wouldn't be too much of an upgrade, but sometimes these items spawn with a very high plus rating. And we found a new ring. And a new ring of slaying along the way. Which is also plus two. Okay. And a minus three ring of strength. That's not too useful. But what about this slaying? I don't think I want to go for a double, double slaying because I really need some more resistances and I would absolutely prefer to have this slaying on another slot or something like that. And don't want to sh shoot that archer. I want to shoot the mage. So here we go. Let's shoot him. And it's axe time. Oh boy. There's a sorcerer. So that's 17% to banish us. It's really spooky. And let's check what we can do here. I think I'm gonna file a floods him. Which somehow. Okay, it worked. I used the file because it silences him. I don't know if his skill could be silenced, I missed to check it. So let's have a look. Elf sorcerer. Yeah. So the water elemental can silence the mage, and this way I can uh, stop him from using the banish on me. So we found a new bow, which is a plus two velocity. That's pure physical. As far as I remember, yeah. Um, well, it's definitely gonna replace the freezing, I think, but mainly because it's already plus two. Okay, so we're gonna X this guy, 
feels good that this axe finally comes to a good use. Felt like a burden for such a long, long time here, but finally finding some good use for it. There's a harmless weapon of protection, fire elemental around the corner. Let's grab this. They're pretty harmless because I'm resistant to fire. Okay, so there's a knight. And that's gonna be elf one done. And since that sorcerer spooked me so much, I feel like that's enough for now. We're gonna go for depths and hope we can grab some goodies there. So let's check if there's any other source of magic resistance, but sadly no. Still no new source of magic resistance. And this is pretty spooky. Those are a lot of dangerous enemies standing right in front of us. So I'm going to take a few shots at this mage, which I was able to kill instantly. It's really nice. Okay. But I feel like I want to stick my head into vaults instead, because this is well, those are really hard hitters, and the Jiangxi are very quick, so... Oh boy. Should have taken the other door. <laughs> Alright, so... What about that? So, what are our options here? We're carrying around a lot of teleportation scrolls, and I think... That's my best bet here. And I'm gonna start shooting at the Iron Brand Convoker and teleport out. That worked. Because there was nothing right beside me which had a lot of uh, potential of instantly killing me. Not at this point any more than it is. And in an emergency situation, I still had a lot of blink scrolls left open. Let's say if I would have gotten in a few hard swings from those ogres, but didn't happen. Strategy went well. And this also means I should X this. Uh, this also means the entrance is free. We can enter the vaults. Okay, I don't know if the other way, uh, the depths entrance was really that much more dangerous. <laughs> I really don't doubt to think that. <laughs> but we, we managed. Everything's all right. And so far, oh, trying the distortion. Luckily, nothing bad happened with this weapon of distortion. So there's another scroll requirement. So let's think about it. And I think I really want to have more armor. Oh, thanks. Scroll requirement. Another shield. That's brutal. <laughs> but it's okay. I didn't wish for another weapon because uh, I really feel like my defenses here are way more important than my offenses. This bow is good enough to kill pretty much everything. But I can't kill uh, anything and I can't kite anything if I'm taking too much damage. Kiting always includes taking some damage, that's why uh, resistances are way more important right now. If I was not wielding the branded longbow though, I would have gone for a weapon there. But this longbow is only missing a few ancient weapon scrolls, but somehow they don't show up. That's sad. But sooner or later some will come. They always come. And so far, uh, Waltz works out pretty fine for us. So this pack certainly should be okay to kill as soon as the sorcerer is dead. Alright. 
There go our first Yuck Taurus down here. I um, want to take down the Convoker before he's able to summon some more baddies. And now we got some gift. And looks like the Yak Taurus are pretty dangerous to us. And that's a triple sword. So I'm not gonna wield this because I had on my Salamian account today a very, very funny game with a truck a worshipping Minotaur. I felt like some really relaxing game. And Drog gifted me two great swords. No, he gifted me one great sword. It was a sword of distortion. I willed, uh, I tried it out, put it into my hands, it was distortion, I didn't want that, put it off, and got a bit banished into the abyss instantly. That can happen if you unwield a distortion weapon. And later on, he gifted me another two-handed sword, this time a triple sword. And turns out it was another uh, it was another triple sword of distortion. And I unwielded it and I got banished into the abyss. This time uh, I stayed down there and took the abyssal room while I was at it. But I felt kind of trolled by my own god. But the moral of the story here is uh, unidentified weapons can be pretty dangerous if you just randomly wield them and a distortion branded weapon can always banish you into the abyss. That's only a 4% chance but somehow I managed to trigger it twice tonight, today. So that's pretty crazy. There goes an Entropy Weaver and we're gonna switch over to Corrosion Resistance which doesn't seem to interest him much. We get corroded hard. Off you go, cat. My cat is very interested in the microphone here. So right now we're not getting in any hits from these spiders. That's why I keep running and hoping the corrosion will wear off at some point. But somehow, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna axe in this situation because the red backs are uh, quick enough to um, catch up with me, so I wouldn't been able to kill them one by one. So there's a book of air. That's swiftness. I'm gonna pick up swiftness. I mean, chances are we're never gonna use any of our spells here in this whole game once we wear, wear this crystal plate armor casting will get really hard until we get rid of the encumbrance but it's okay so this crystal plate armor is really looking nice and everything but i don't dare to wear it uh, i think it would be fine with the encumbrance by now my armor rating is okay and i also have 20 strength but I would suddenly lose this uh, magic resistance, and I don't want to see that happen. I really need my magic resistance. So the crystal plate needs to wait until we have some other source of magic resistance available. It's not going to happen before that, as much as I would like to have the regeneration. Okay. So far, vaults is a lot easier than the last area we cleared which was Elf, I think. Okay. I'm not gonna keep these books. We need our inventory slots. So, there goes the Ogre Pack, and the easiest way to deal with them right now is just to just run away and wait until one of them enters a line of sight and see if we can kill them afar. And if the Ogre Mage shows up again, I'm gonna start running again. And I'm only uh, gonna shoot the, the Ogre Mage as soon as he's alone. 
because then the paralyze won't kill me even if it hits me. But when you get paralyzed with these guys, I lost a character or two in this kind of situation. So there's a Rakshasa. This time I want to check it's only a normal trident. That distortion Rakshasa spooked me a little. Because I was wondering if uh, the copies of him also get the distortion brand. And that would be pretty spooky. But it could be. Alright. We're hungry again. And the Convoker got killed before his word of recall went through. That's really cool. I really like that. There go Moriaktor. And I feel like I should take these guys serious. I feel like they can punch out a lot of damage because I have no shield and my evasion rating is very poor. I only have AC. I have some of that, but against the high base damage rating of a crossbow, I think this could get pretty dangerous from time to time. And there is a swing. I rather want to separate this situation somewhat. Sphinxes have a lot of debilitations and there's 17% is a very high chance for my taste. I mean it's the area of chance where I feel like I can fight them, but still I want to take these situations very carefully and very controlled. Because when you're surrounded with a 17% chance of uh, total disablement hitting you uh, like that, that's pretty dangerous. Alright, so Sphinxes have Paralyze as well and Smite, so that's not too harmless. And that's the reason why I don't want to uh, put up the crystal plate armor right now because my chances of resisting these spells would be even worse than and I feel like that's too dangerous for getting some points of armor class more. I feel like that would be a bad deal. So the centaur got knighted. But we've got no problem with that. I think about going for one more level of the vaults here. And this is certainly some scary situation. I think about going for level two of vaults as well, as well because most of the stuff happening right uh, here is uh, not quicker than me, which means I can create my own safety zones here to fight. I'm reluctant to go for Schultz because there's so many debilitating spells and I would really prefer to have at least one pip more of magic resistance available before I uh, go for this area because most of the spells you encounter in Schultz are kind of are trying to pin you down somewhere, make you unable to escape and that's something I want to have as much resistance against as possible and even then Schultz should be taken very seriously because there's a lot of range damage sources and yeah I've noticed that range damage sources are pretty dangerous for me because I'm a centaur evasion is not my strong side think about leveling some evasion but the aptitude is very horrible and I feel like going for more evocations here could be the better idea, I don't know. But I have some really decent rechargeable items here at my disposal and hmm. we'll see how this works out. So there was a sentinel, but we took him down before he has a, had a chance to mark us, luckily. And I'm noticing that I have some trouble killing off the wardens. That's the second one which uh, didn't take too much damage from my shots. 
I feel like uh, some more enchantments would be necessary to safely punch from these guys' owners. So maybe I shouldn't go for uh, level 2 yet. So we got gifted another centaur bargaining. It's interested. I'm very interested in this item and hoping it'll be a better uh, bargaining than the last few because this game really gave me a lot of unique centaur bardings. I don't know if I ever found so many uh, centaur bardings in one game, but they all had some unique flaws like slaying minus five or being minus three on one of the most uh, valuable slots of uh, armor class for a centaur. So let's hope it'll be something good. Well, it's definitely an upgrade to the old one. It has everything the old one had and the resist poison. And this also means for the time being we can get rid of the uh, resist poison ring because we don't need a double source of resist poison. Thanks, Akavaro. That was very kind of you. And it was also a plus four, which was slightly better than the old one. That's also something I can use, even if it's only a slight increase. All right. So it looks like a, my only problem right now are ex extremely fast enemies. Uh, enemies with high evasion ratings and enemies with absurdly high uh, armor class ratings, but I think I could have went for the velocity bow for these uh, vault worms. Maybe they are resistant to fire. Let's have a look. I'm gonna try to go for vaults too, because I want to delay my uh, visit to the shoals as long as possible. So there's another warden to try out, but I definitely don't want to take the fight from this angle. So I'm going to try another downstairs. This was an enchanted plate armor, but somehow I want to... Hmm, I want to stick to the magic resistance chain mail here. I mean, plate armor with... Uh, Magic resistance would be some kind of an upgrade, but not enough. I'm hoping for some rendered armor sooner or later. Because for the time being, this chain armor provides everything I need. Although... Oh, whatever. The... Global damage reduction from a plate armor is way better. I should respect that. But it poison resistance, not uh, magic resistance. So at least I know it now. Sometimes the curiosity gets the better of me. Okay, so that's that's more of the angle I wanted for this fight. So I want to break the line of sight with the uh, uh, sentinel and focus my fire on him right now because I don't want to get marked. So let's let's check. This guy is wearing some shiny plate armor. Now we're gonna put up the velocity bow. Well still having a hard time killing these guys. Let's check what it was. That's a plus one of magic resistance. But I would lose some EV here. Now, yeah. if it had a better rating, but no. I have some ancient armor scrolls, but somehow I want to keep them for uh, the hat and cloak slot because it's only five, isn't it? No, oh, three. Uh, because I want to be able to enchant the other uh, slots here to plus two if anything nice shows up. 
rather than enchanting a armor, which is something I'm not absolutely happy with. And obviously this run we're not finding too many enchant uh, weapon or armor scrolls. So I'm going to use them sparingly. So we took this fight around the corner and so far looks like Waltz 2 is kind of like Waltz 1. Gotta be careful about sources of serious elemental damage to, to swap in uh, with the proper assistance early on. So there goes a pack of harpies and I'm gonna axe these because they're faster than me and there's no way I can uh, kite them into a situation where they're not swarming me so the axe is the way to go in this situation and here uh, we have some orc sorcerer behind these ugly things that's why I went all the way back because I don't want to get give this guy some unnecessary chance to paralyze us here this could be pretty ugly with all this stuff around us here some exploding tomahawks fireworks but nothing more than that so there's the rest of the orcs and I got lucky and the uh, sorcerer didn't even follow and so it's going to be pretty easy to kill this guy off alone so there's some orc knight and elven archer so I'm going to axe this guy and I'm going to axe him first because now I can kite the rest of these people and shoot them down without taking any further damage. But I couldn't avoid the damage from the uh, archer, so I had to take him down first. So there's another plate armor, and I can't stop putting these on, hoping something good shows up. Because I'm not really 100% happy with wearing only chain armor. Because, well, evasion is kinda out if you're a centaur. I mean, you're big, which reduces your base evasion rating per se, as far as I know. You're evading worse if you're as large as that. And it's at a very horrible aptitude. There's the sorcerer, got splatted. You're at a very horrible aptitude, and yeah, it's, in my opinion, better to rely on raw armor class here and there's a sorcerer I think I'm gonna file him because again I don't want to get a beast here and a water elemental is a safe way to take down people like him there's a demonologist take him also vanish go elemental okay so there's another one of these. <clears throat> I'm gonna use the lamp of fire on him because I wanna kill him off really quickly. Alright, because he also summoned some fiends which also can torment as far as I remember. And yeah, stuff got pretty ugly here pretty quickly. And that's why I carry around these evocation items, because they can get very uh, handy in situations like these. And that's really a crap load of these guys, so... They're not in range yet. But I'm gonna pop the box of beasts here. To have something to block the line of sight. And hopefully... That'll do the job for us, which happened very, very nice. So the box didn't get used. Alright. That went re really well. And I think without these evocation items, I probably would have been in a very hard situation there. 
was a good chance to get banished by so many while well, so many sources of banishment are hanging around and you're at a meager 13% scary all right hell hello there that's plus seven our lack our cold and it may slow you when you take damage I think that's a price I can afford to pay being a centaur getting slowed means um, I'm not as terribly slowed as most other races are so I think I can afford that and my resistances got covered up pretty well by that and I forgot to put up my resist fire again uh, it's very very bad of you I can you should stop doing that you should you should learn managing your rings better okay, let's stop that crap uh, what I'm trying to say here is <laughs> swapping jewelry is tedious but it saves lives okay so let's swap over to this bothered before he pulls up this trick too late too late okay I'm gonna run I'm gonna take a run here there's too much stuff summoned in my face the buggers are invisible I mean I have a ring of sea invisible on me but I rather want to wait until these guys are despawned so I really don't like what's happening here it's really terrible so I'm totally surrounded by these guys so these ogres are hasted and since I don't want to blow up a successful character in such a stupid way I'm gonna link over here and get upstairs and axe these guys oh boy I think I took a wrong turn there <laughs> okay and I need to readjust my items because that bow is gonna be my new main bow so we're not gonna take the, take the staircase again I'm not, there goes a necromancer but it's not too dangerous so let's axe these guys that's the downside on wearing a venomous weapon it's pretty useless against undead I think I want to put up a uh, holy wrath bow in the long run for this kind of scenario sounds like the best option for me so I want to call this room danger room somehow because uh, it's again this room where I fight something dangerous it was like that when I entered this floor and the story is repeating here but this time we're at a pretty good spot being able to kite these guys even at these uh, corners but stuff like that will only work if you're at Mindelay for your ranged weapon before that you will take too long per shot for kiting like that with a centaur or while you're hasted that works as well so I really like this uh, venom branding for those enemies it works upon because this means I'm um, combined with my high speed very able to kite stuff dead without having to take the final shot it's very useful against stuff like that cyclops although those cyclops aren't too dangerous anymore but let's take this ogre mage for example uh, in a tight situation I can uh, just start running as soon as they're poisoned enough and there we go with boggarts and that's why I'm happy to have a plus 7 bow by now because I even managed to hit the archer pretty easily and there's still an army of ugly beasts waiting for us okay but it's also a very good uh, bite of XP, this whole situation. 
It's a lot of enemies and that's a lot of XP. Pretty good. There goes the level up. I want to try if I can shoot these guys now. Hmm, seems like I can somehow. The repel missiles isn't strong enough on them. So this means I can potentially clear out Elf 2 better now. Which is really good. But I don't know if I don't want to go for uh, Schultz 1 now and have a look how we'll get, get along there. Because we are now featuring a solid set of uh, resistances. So magic resist could still be better, but well, I think I'm gonna find some. There's a scroll of recharging. I'm gonna recharge this digging once immediately because I really want to have it. And also these guys are easier to kill now. There's a scroll we didn't know. It was a scroll of torment. And of course there are more enemies streaming towards us. That's the thing I want, why I really want to have this uh, crystal plate armor, because of the re regeneration. Regeneration is really sweet to have. Because once you have regeneration on some equipment slot, uh, you re really can heal along the way. You can uh, heal up pretty quickly so you don't need to risk getting spotted by wandering monsters. That's especially important if you're uh, playing a race with a, ba uh, with a bad uh, stealth rating. That's when regeneration is extra useful because you will uh, attract enemies sooner or later. There's a very low chance that they will not spot you when they're coming across your way. So regeneration covers up that problem a bit. Okay, so I'm not interested in this book of Earth. Let's check if we can kill this guy while he's in this. Well, I'm not going to play around here anymore. Let's shoot these guys. Alright. That's done. So we can put up the ring. This time I didn't forget it. And there's an archer. Well, it's still a bit tedious to kill them, but at least I don't need to swap every time into the X for a uh, blinking enemy. It's always a bit tedious. It's easier just to keep shooting. You don't need to move while you're shooting. So there goes a frost giant. It's one of the first major baddies I meet down here. So we are taking him down pretty decently. But that's to expect when you're running around with a plus seven longbow. This god gift really helped me a lot along the way because the plus two bow was kind of outdated by now. Although I'm not uh, totally happy with the Venom branding here, but uh, as a ranged fighter you tend to uh, collect weaponry. There is a few things you want to have. There's Holy Wrath, which is really interesting because you can shoot out uh, demons pretty good with it. Then there's a penetration brand which allows you to uh, fire your projectiles as a uh, piercing line shot, which is really nice if you get your enemies uh, clumped up in a hallway. And yeah, that's alone three weapons if I, if I would keep this venom brand. And then I might be wanting to enchant this uh, freezing or flaming brand. So, there's always a lot of options when you're arranged. So we're done with Waltz 2, and somehow I don't want to delve deeper into Waltz for now. 
I feel like uh, this could get a bit more dangerous with this low value of magic resistance I, I have. And I'm gonna go for my first vis visit to the Schultz now because I feel like I got a lot stronger here along the way. Our resistances are solid now, apart from magic, but that should be okay, I think. We have a good weapon now, which means we can kill off any sources of uh, debilitating, uh, debilitation pretty quickly. And also we're uh, flying. Not right now though. Let's get that. And also we have the option to go in this. So alongside with all those blinking scrolls, I think my chances are pretty decent that I won't get killed on level one of <laughs> the Schultz here. But we're gonna end this episode where I uh, where it started and where the last episode ended as well because I'm not gonna enter the Schultz for this episode. I'm gonna take a break here before proceeding. And that's this run so far. Pretty funny. But I'm really enjoying these uh, uh, equipment upgrades we found on this episode. Especially this bow is a real boon, providing resistance to electricity as well, and the cold resistance we were lacking, so we're well around it now. That's very, very nice. Alright guys, thanks for watching, and see you hopefully on the next episode of The Flying Centaur Hunter. Oh, he's again not flying. So, there we go. Alright. Everything's fine. See you soon, guys.